Good morning. Sorry, I was just checking out. I was live there. Hope you're all well today. Um, and welcome to Time to Talk. Let me just get myself set up. That comes through rather quickly there. So I hope you're all keeping warm. It's um, definitely a bit chillier out there than it has been, isn't it? I've, um, I've been out for a walk this morning. Um, out in the, I've put my, all wrapped up, I've still got my scarf on as you can see and I've been out, I went for a walk through the fields, there's some beautiful fields near us so I went out for a walk through there and uh, it's all lovely and snowy and icy and cold and, and whatnot but I did really really enjoy it. So it's just me today, lucky lucky people, just me so you just get to see me um, so I'll try not to bore you too, uh, too much but uh, I've come today, I'm coming to talk to you about Swedish death cleaning. Um, I'll just wait for a minute, get a few people to come in. But uh, Swedish death cleaning was, was something I read about. It's a bit of a buzzword. And I thought, what, what is Swedish death cleaning? And um, first of all, I thought it was some sort of bizarre death ritual. I thought, what's going on here? Or to quote the online... Um, blog the spruce it was some kind of morbid death crime scene cleanup thing because I've heard of those as well where you know obviously if it's an unpleasant thing to be sorted out but it turns out to be neither of those so nobody worry there's no blood and guts involved in here the only uh, might be blood sweat and tears but not blood and guts so we'll be all right so it turns out to be um, a decluttering technique and it's uh I've read this lovely book which I'll show you in a minute and I just thought it was a really beautiful way to start thinking about getting death ready. Uh, we've already talked to Natasha um, from the Brown Bread Collective and we've talked to Ruth about wills. So we've had a death conversation, we've spoken about wills and we've also spoken to Kay about writing life stories and this kind of goes hand in hand with all of those. So it's kind of a natural progression I think, to then start looking around and thinking, well, we know this is going to happen. What can we do to start getting ready? So, like I said, it's a, a decluttering technique, but you can apply it to your life as well. And it helps prepare you and your loved ones for your death in a very gentle way. Now, it's from a book. It was coined. The phrase was the, it's from the book, The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning by Margarita Magnusson who's a lovely Swedish lady um, and it's I've, I've read this and it's a lovely little book and it took it took me an evening to read um, and it's Swedish name is now I'm going to pronounce this wrong so my Swedish Swedish friend Joanna is probably going oh. but it's der stadning which der means death and stadning means cleaning so she's put them together and created this word der stadning which literally means death cleaning and it starts with a fabulous little quote um, there's several, a call, um, that's from Leonard Cohen and it says putting your house in order if you can do it is one of the most comforting activities and benefits um, of it are incalculable. I so said I lost my words there. Um, I'm sure that's what it says. Yeah, and the benefits of it are incalculable and that's from Leonard Cohen. But this this is a little book and it's a rather lovely little book. Like I said, it doesn't take long to read. There's a couple of different covers. It's under a tenner. So a little bit about Margarita. She's a Swedish, I think she's a Swedish artist. So she's a mother of five and she describes herself as being somewhere between the ages of 80 and 100. Um, she's actually 87 I looked it up and she says she's death cleaned for not just herself um, but she death cleaned for her mother her father and her husband and she's seen generations of women in predominantly women in her family doing the same for their loved ones and she's noted that it's it's quite difficult to do and obviously she's done it a fair few times so she thought she'd write a little book on it and I've never actually had to death clean I've helped my mum with bits when my nan died but other people I was far too young to help so what we do is we, Margarita goes on the premise that we're all going to die one day and as my friend Sue says the only things that are definite are being born paying taxes and dying that's very Sue so and during that time we can do many many things and we do do many things and we can collect all sorts of wonderful things and decorate our life on our homes with but what happens to all this when we die and 
you, when you think about it, I mean, I'm just looking around the room I'm in now and there's so much stuff. <laughs> so she says that you've got to think about it from the point of view that when you die, somebody's going to dispose of your stuff. And, you know, if it's somebody who loves you very much, it's going to be very difficult. And if it's somebody that doesn't love you, if you have no one to do it for you and it's done for you, all those things that meant so much to you will be just scooped up and gone. So it's a good thing to get in the habit of, of doing so that you know all the things that are treasured, that you treasure and are treasured by you or the treasured things that people have given you are perhaps going to somewhere where they might go to various places, which we'll talk through in a bit. But I think that's a really lovely idea. And she goes on to say, it's not necessarily a sad thing. Um, and actually from reading the book, and the book is really quite funny, she's got a little wicked sense of humour. Um, and it's true that getting ready for death sounds awfully sad, but it seems to be more about getting organised. And rather than waiting till you're very, very old to do it, she says when you can't shut a cupboard or you're ramming a drawer shut, a drawer shut, sorry, it's time to sort stuff out. And I've got a few drawers that are ramming. So it's not just for the old elderly and the dying. And it's about cleaning up for yourself instead of somebody cleaning up for you, which when she puts it like that, you know, and people can't get their heads around this. So you leave all this mess behind and we're not immortal. It's going to happen. Um, so and obviously sometimes as well, there is a dispute about who's having what. And that's sad. That's really horrible. But that is true. That is sad. So this would be a way of solving that. Um, and she gives an example in the book about a lovely bracelet that um, I think was her mother's that her father had given her. And she'd got she got five children and only one bracelet. So she decided that she didn't wear it anymore. She'd sell it. Um, they all had something that had been her mother's and her father's. So she sold this bracelet, told the children she'd sold it. And that was that. So there wasn't this discussion, this hoo-ha. So it's also about saving time as well, which I quite like the idea of. I like the idea of saving time. So she started doing this when um, her mother passed away. She had to help her father death clean for them. And I think he moved from a bigger place to a smaller place. So she, she found that her mother had started doing this herself. She'd started putting things away, labelling boxes, and she found a uniform. I don't know what sort of uniform it was, but a uniform with take to the, a little label on it says take to the museum because it was an, probably an old soldier's uniform, army uniform. And she'd got suggestions. Things were boxed up and ready to go. So obviously her mother had been thinking about it and she said how useful she found this. And so after downsizing her father to a smaller house and finishing off the cleaning, she moved him in, into the new, new smaller place. Um, and, you know, she points out at the time as well, she's got five small children. So time was of an essence. It was really helpful for her to have these things done that she didn't have to spend all her time and energy running around, tidying things up, looking things through, sorting things out when she wanted to grieve, support her dad to grieve and support her children through it. And that makes sense to me because we all know the grieving process is, is exhausting. So she's got a lovely little quote. Um, and it's, let me find this lovely little quote. Here we go. Uh, here we go. You have collected so much wonderful stuff in your life, stuff that your family and friends can't evaluate or take care of. Let me help you to make your loved one's memory of you affectionate rather than upsetting. And that's her words. And that, that is so true. So she goes on to say, this isn't something that you can do overnight. Um, but as you get older, she, this is a really good point that I hadn't actually thought of. Sorry, it's cold in now to put the heat on in a minute. A really good point that as you get older, you think the time goes so quickly. But it's actually that you slow down and take things take longer to do. So that's why time doesn't go, go goes faster than you thought. And I sat there reading that going, that's so true because time does go quicker as I've got older but it, I have noticed that I do it takes me longer to do things so yeah that's a scary thought uh, <laughs> but the essence of this is that it's uh, you move a bit closer every day to doing a little bit every day rather than making it a huge project um, that you complete over a week I think if you if you had to 
that would be a nightmare. And psychologically, it's a good way to approach it, especially if you're not well or if you've got, you know, you perhaps you know your illness is terminal or, you know, you're just, it's such a huge task anyway. So obviously she starts suggesting that you go through the basement, the shed, um, the attic, the outside cupboards, because they are things that are probably, only probably not so precious. They're more likely to be open to the elements. Um, you're not going to have your jewellery stored there. You're not going to have your photographs stored there because they'll get ruined. So you've also probably forgotten what is there. And that's true because I don't actually know what is in my cupboard and in my shed. So it can't actually be that that important, can it? You know, and how much am I going to miss them? How easy would it be to clear them? And I'm not a hoarder, but I definitely think that might be handy. Um, so that's that's definitely something that I'm going to look at what's in them and go through them because there must be stuff in there that I haven't seen for years. And then another good idea is to tell your friends and your family what you're up to. They might even want to help you. Um, you know, so a it's nice to have somebody to talk to you while you do it. Say, what do you think of this? Oh, no, it's past it. Let's chuck it. Or or you know, and if you've got a couple of people doing it, it's going to be a lot quicker to do. And also that could be a beautiful time to discuss the stories around it. I know with mum's been pulling things out and looking at them, I've been saying, oh, that's nice. What's that? Where did that come from? And she's been able to tell me what it is. And if she wants to keep it, she wants to keep it. Or if she doesn't, you know. Um, and there might be something that she's treasured and wants to get rid of that I think, oh, that's beautiful. I'd really like that. I've got various things of my grandparents. I you know, can't keep all of it. Um, we'll come on to the kitchen later on. But, you know, I have got um, a beautiful glass um, cake stand, crystal glass cake stand from one man. One that's the tiered one that you hold up and carry like that with the little cakes on it. Another one that's got an actual stand and a flat base that you, you put your cake on. And that's, that's something I've got from both of them. I could have taken lots more, but there's not room for it. <laughs> um, and of course, there's stories attached to them. So she says to start with the less personal things first which makes sense. Main reason is not simply to avoid being sad, but if you're going to start with photographs and letters, you are going to go right down memory lane and you're going to be looking in that box of photographs for the next three weeks and get absolutely nothing done. And I think also that will help build up your resilience over time so that you can make those more difficult decisions. You know, you can look at things and by the time you get to your letters, you, you'll get into the point where you think, I'm going to keep a couple, I can't keep them all, and, you know, work on it on that premise. And I think that's, you're kind of putting yourself in a training mode. But it's not about getting rid of everything. You, you can keep what you want to keep. This isn't a Marie Kondo style, minimal, everything is, you know, get rid of everything. Um, you know, and I see what she's saying here, because you know, if I look around the house, there's things I don't want. Some things I do and, you know, it's only times when you, you get them out that you think, oh, I wouldn't mind. I would I'd keep that. I mean, I've got bits that are old and I've got bits that are completely they're not valuable at all, but they are to me. So the first thing to do is write a list of categories in your home that you would need to sort out. So we've all got clothes, furniture, probably an attic, not everybody, kitchen, shed, china, for example. We've also got all the things in your particular home. So you might have fishing stuff craft stuff I'm just looking around my room going if anybody had to clean this they'd be going why has she got this what's that other people have got books me cds um so that's you know when you've got this list you can start looking at the things you've got to do and I think it's about bringing it down bit by bit so you look at it and then going through it going through what it is you want to keep and the idea of having a place for everything now my my, my husband despairs of me doing this because I'm like, put it where it should be. If you know where it is, it's, it's easier to find. And it's also that will help you to not lose things. If everything does have a place, Mark, if you're watching, if you put it on the table, it's going to get knocked off. The cats are going to knock it off. I am going to move it. That happens. And an organised house is going to be more, it's going to be easier to clean out when you're not here anymore. So another suggestion is to give things away that you know people cherish that you no longer need. For example, the with um, the cake stands that my mum doesn't need them anymore and she knew I liked them, so she gave them to me. And that gives you an opportunity to talk to the people that you love, the people around you about their stories. And, you know, otherwise they'd just be 
two cake stands that I didn't know about, but I know one's one lens and one's the other. And, you know, that gives me a bit of an idea of the, of the heritage of them and, and what's there. So that's another, another lovely thing. Um, and it's not, again, it's not about rushing to get this done. She said that it took a year to clean out her husband's um, stuff after he died, you know, to move on and do that because you're not in the right place to start with and no one's expecting you to be. Good morning, Jean. Oh, is that you, Jean? Oh, Jean, it's my friend, Jean. Aha, good morning, Jean. <laughs> um, so and that's part of the death conversation is is talking to people about it and you know talk to older relatives um about their items and it is difficult i mean i'm hardly going to march into my mum's house and say right i'm going to start death cleaning what do you want to get rid of but actually i was talking to mum about this yesterday and she actually said oh that sounds an interesting book so i'm going to lend it to my mum now we are quite open about talking about things um but not everybody is but and i think in here she even says oh is it on the back about it, the book itself being a gift to somebody who's elderly. I don't know that I'd quite go that far and go, here we go, here's a present for you. <laughs> but it's, you know, it is, it is possible that people would appreciate it. And also, if you think about it, somebody who knows they've got a lot of stuff in the house will probably appreciate, if it's done tactfully, <laughs> the suggestion of, have you thought about what you're gonna do with all these things? Do you want all of these things around? Should we tidy some of them away? Some of them you're not going to trip over them or do you need them all? Um, as long as you're obviously not laying claim to them, but it might well be that it opens up the conversation for them to say, you know, I've got all those china ornaments of all those bells or all those symbols. I don't want them anymore, but I don't know what to do with them. So it gives it, you know, you, you, you know, your loved ones, you know how you can bring things up and you know, what's, what's safe. So that's a lovely way of opening up and like, it's going to be possibly a relief for a lot of people. So once you've got your list of rooms, draw up four columns and give these four columns labels of give away, throw away, stay or move. So, and you can always change your mind. So if you start looking at it, especially if you've got maybe big bits of furniture or expensive antiques or things, and you think, well, I'm not going to just chuck them away. Um, but you know, I'd like them to go somewhere. You can start thinking about how you're gonna find these things. Even if you just think, well, I'm gonna move them to the room of not sure or to the corner of not sure, depending on how big your house is. In my house, it would be the corner of not sure if you were lucky. And on downsizing, she says about actually doing this and it being a practical way to see what you've got, if you've got lovely big bits of furniture, that's all well and good. But if you're going from maybe a family home to a smaller apartment or a little, you know, a little retirement um, bungalow or something, there isn't going to be room for the contents of a four bedroom detached house. And another fabulous little quote from her that let me find this. I love this. Um, here we go. Aging is certainly not for weaklings. That is why you do should not wait too long with your downsizing. She has got a brilliant sense of humor. She's so practical, but you can't take offense. You really can't take offense from her. She's the books by Margarita Magnusson, Jane. It's, um, let me show you, it's that. Sorry, I'm, talk, I'm talking to here and I've got my comments coming on there. Um, I'll, I'll put a picture on later on. It's, it's under a tenor and it's just a lovely, lovely little bit. And I read it in like an evening. A uh, little Swedish lady, um, but you'll you catch it up and you, you'll see it on there. So now with all the things you've got, where are they going? what are you going to do with them? Where are they going to go? So the things that you've got could go to a charity shop, uh, auction, family, friends, up for sale, eBay, Gumtree, Facebay, whatever you've got around you. And, you know, with, with doing that, you give people the chance who want it to take it because I think there's nothing worse and you've got these boxes of stuff that your family are going, I don't know, what am I going to do with her collection of hedgehog ornaments? Bloody eight hedgehogs, I trod on one at my foot. Whatever it is, you know, for example, we've got, well, I was talking to mum about this. My nan had a collection, my dad's mum had a collection of um, costume dolls from all, the, all around the world. They were in my bedroom as a child and they gave me the absolute eebie-jeebies. So they're still in the loft, 
all still in their um yeah on amazon for 8.99 kim that's it yeah morning lit kim morning lindsay um and uh these dolls i don't want them mum doesn't want them and my daughter doesn't want them either we've had this conversation so but somewhere some somebody somewhere will be a costume um nationality doll collector and they are in mint condition because they're still in their their things we should get them out really even if somebody has them for nothing i would rather that than than see them chucked in a skip at some point so there's a various ways around you i mean it's worth asking around putting on facebook i mean obviously i don't say <laughs> so and so's died come and get what you want but you know there are garage sales there are obviously when we're back and being um you know we can just we can uh, meet with people again you could have a garage sale i mean they're very popular in america and we're more of a um a boot sale people here aren't we and we were talking the other day what happened to jumble sales and who was i talking to and they'd never heard of a jumble sale they did not know because they were younger oh i know where i was it was it was lizzie she'd never heard of a jumble sale now she's quite a bit younger than me to be fair and I'm like, what you've done is you have to have elbows like this and you go in and you rummage for it. And she was in hysterics. Morning, Carmel. How are you, my darling? You've probably done a little bit of death cleaning, haven't you, sweetheart? Um, yeah, so big love to you, Carmel, because I know you've had a bit of a grim year last year. And, um, oh, hello, husband. Oh, you're from Wales. My husband's joined us from Wales. Reeti, if you're watching, he's where you are. I can tong, tong winley. Tong, I can't say it, but it's where it's where you are, Reeti. So be warned, the trucker is about. So, and um, it's uh, it's lovely trucker's mum's ninth anniversary today. So mm, to to my lovely husband, it's nine years since we lost our Wendy today. So, and she was such a lovely mum-in-law, such a lovely lady. Anyway, sorry, I've completely digressed, um, talking to people, and uh, you know, so. When we found somewhere that these things can go i mean some things are going to go in the in, in the rubbish you're going to look at some things and think i don't know why i've kept it it's broken it's of no use but you'd be surprised what other people actually would like so it is not a bad idea to make an inventory to see what you've actually got and when i when i read that section of the book i sat i sat there in my lounge and i just looked around at all the things i've got how much stuff i've got and just thought wow to pack this room up would take forever I mean that's another thing that I thought of would be um if you've got to start thinking about death cleaning for yourself Swedish death cleaning this is if you had to move what would you think oh, I'm not taking that with me and my friend Tracy commonly known as Bird bless her heart one of my best friends she's moved a couple of times I've seen her move a couple of times and she literally pared it down to the bare minimum every time and she literally just had a room of stuff to move in the end and I was shocked and I had when both times I've moved I seem to have gained more and more stuff in fact one move I still had stuff in a box that was unpacked from the last move and that's that's when I knew I had to do something so and I was talking to mum um the other when I was talking to her about this little book and she was saying when you saw people you know, pictures of people moving in the old in you know historic pictures of people they put all their stuff in a cart and move or in a, in a hand cart and I know lots of those people lived in poverty but they had so little stuff and we've gone the opposite way we have so much stuff just so much stuff and we don't need all of it um I couldn't I probably need a I don't know every time I've moved they had a bigger van and you know mum was talking about having a Sunday best outfit for church and um you know and you know a smart coat and you know two pairs of shoes and I think I don't want to look at how many clothes and boots that we've got so some of this is going to help us in a, having a healthy mental attitude which is something that I probably need to look at and I guess other people do as well so where do you start what do you do so the first thing Margarita suggests you start with is clothes and that's where I'm going to start I know I've got clothes that are two or three sizes smaller than I'm ever going to be again and I've got a suitcase in the loft of clothes that I couldn't bear to be parted with I put them up there for when I was slimmer and because I've I put on weight I gave up smoking put on weight hey that's cool I'd rather be I'd rather have given up smoking and you know be harder to kidnap is what I call my curvaceous friend um but they were some of the things it wasn't because the clothes were that wonderful it was because I couldn't let go 
of the size I had been, I guess. Um, and there is a very beautiful purple skirt up there that's it's got tears and it's got little coins on it so I might salvage that and make something from that not that it'll fit me but maybe make a, a cushion or a, a something um, so you, again you could use these things for recycling um, it never did fit it was always a bit tight and now it's in a suitcase in the loft just in case and has been since we moved here 11 years ago so <laughs> I'm not a hoarder much so Carmel, yeah, still sorting stuff and waiting for more hassle. Oh, yeah, it's really difficult, Carmel, isn't it? Really difficult to, to know what to do. And obviously, when you've got a big family as well, you, you know, you've got lots of people getting involved. That can be tricky too. So make two piles, the pile you want to keep and the pile you want to get rid of. And then you put your first pile back in the wardrobe, making sure that that's everything you want. And the second lot, if, what, the, if you, what is it, if you haven't worn it for a year, you're not going to. I mean, there's obviously exceptions if you've got like, I don't know, um, beach stuff. If you didn't go last year, I mean, this is this this year is going to be different. So if you haven't worn it for two years <laughs> because nobody wore anything other than sweatpants and joggers last year because there was nowhere to go or this year too. Um, and the other stuff, pack up when you can and go to charity and even or to charity or to refugees. There's all sorts of places that need it. And even if you can't take it there now, if it's in bags, it's ready to go. And also if something happens to you and it's got a label on it that says to a charity shop and it closed for charity, you know, if that happened to me, my daughter, cause my, it would be my daughter, would go, right, that's mum's clothes, she doesn't want to take them to charity. And we've all got those things we bought in a sale that we thought were fabulous and got home and thought, what was I thinking? You know, the ones I mean, the ones with the sales tag still on them, got a couple. And children's clothes that were cute in 1998 when we moved to here I found a bag of clothes <laughs> so that's that was 11 years ago and the children were 15 and, and nearly 13 um I found some bags of baby clothes <laughs> that I'd brought with me to that house I think they might come in handy and I did take them to a charity shop and you know because they can use them for ragging if they're they're beyond all use um, and they were there's lots of knitted things that were lovely and just plain baby grows, but some of the styles would probably have been a little bit groovy. Um, but there's also um they can rag them so then they get weight for the for the money for the weight of the fabric. And also there are always going to be charitable causes, whether it's here or in um impoverished countries abroad, where a t-shirt is going to cover a little bare back and they're not going to care if it's got care bears on it, Ben 10 showing my age here or whether it's got the latest dinosaur whatever on it they're not going to care so they could still be used so after clothes we get into the more difficult stuff now of things all the things you must have things you no longer use think about all the things that are in your house deep breath the kitchen the kitchen oh my goodness the kitchen gadgets crockery and cutlery everything you kept just in case jam jars tupperware without the lids there's never the lids for tupperware um serving dishes plastic tubs saucepans casserole dishes glassware there's so much and i've got stuff that some of the stuff i've got is really lovely and um, will you know would be nice to pass on but there's always charity shops shelters refuges free cycle especially at the moment I know, I mean, I work with people, I work for the winter shelter and, um, you know, there are people in temporary accommodation and at the moment people are, are housed, thank goodness, uh, but it's not for, but they're going into literally a better room with nothing. And, you know, we, we, my manager I know has given out a couple of saucepans, you know, unmatching cutlery and crockery. And for, if you've got nothing, that's handy and obviously at the moment we've got a lot of people a lot of families a lot of people who've got less income you know that is going to it's going to be what with covid i think it's going to be quite quite a difficult couple of years to say the least so i think there's going to be a surge in these things there's always refuges and there's always shelters of whatever nature that need these things so it might you haven't got to get rid of it now but keep it to one side and then when somebody puts out a plea or you see something you can ask and check 
and obviously your more fancy goods anything that's like you know antiques and valuables if you want to keep them keep them but when you've got four sets of things and you're not going to use them um you know think about auctions ebay selling sites and auctions they sound expensive but you don't have any layout for that so supposing you make 150 quid i don't know what the auction um commission is but obviously that comes off of that so you're still you're still winning you're still getting money so what's Carmel saying? Reverse the hangers and have a look in six weeks or whenever the hangers have not been turned around, get rid of. That's a fantastic tip, Carmel. That's a fantastic tip. Yeah. There's lots of my hangers that would never be turned around. I really like that. Thanks, Carmel. Um, so as you've probably realised, I'm really close to my mum and dad. I keep talking about them and I love them to bits. I'm blessed to have them both. And we were talking about their crockery situation um the other day now they've got this beautiful blue glass pyrex set that was my nan's so that's my dad's mum now she's been dead for nearly 44 years lover and they've still got about a 12 piece setting of tea plates side plates big plates serving plates serving bowls and um a beautiful lovely expensive it would have been crockery um so it's at least 12 place settings and the days of them having 12 people are really gone I mean, mum she'd happily feed the whole family but she was never one for organizing parties she didn't really enjoy it so as soon as it kind of became my turn I think she was more than happy to hand it over to me and now if there's a big family meal to cook obviously when we're not in covid and we can it's down to me and I love it so the big family gatherings are here so I'm the one with the not so nice 18 place setting that was a cheapy set from Argos so that's not an heirloom but that's something that could be thrown but my mum's set is you know I and mean, it was my nan's from before I before I was born so that's something that could maybe get passed on and I've got some nice bits but there's some bits I simply won't want to pass on to people or people you know won't need um, and there will come a time when I don't want to do the big hostessing and having the whole family around anymore. At the moment, I can't I can't see that happening um, right now, but I know it will happen. And there's another point. My oops, sorry, my table moved. <laughs> I've got a slide out table. Um, my uh, in in this book, Margarita points out that if you've got to tidy your room for someone to come and stay, and it's an effort, you've got too much stuff. And I thought, sat down, I thought, what? But I can see what she means. If you if you're thinking, oh, so and so's coming, I've got to sort that room out, then you've got too much stuff. And that was an interesting point. And um, my cousins come and stay when we have this big family day thing. And the number of times, as much as I love them, I think, oh, I've got to tidy up that back room for them to come. I've got to tidy up the, the front room for those ones. And I think, and reading it, I'm thinking, it's not that I don't want them to come and stay, but the fact I've got to tidy stuff away means I've got too much stuff um okay Jean see to you soon and um yeah and I was thinking about uh that and now there'll, there'll come a time when it I'll be like oh Sophie it's your turn so and and while we're on that I have the, the importance of doing it while you still can um a lot of you probably know I used to work in care and I used to go to this lovely lovely couple who were in their 80s absolutely lovely people um and they had this beautiful house over many stories it's like a big townhouse and um they i mean they had so many rooms they didn't they didn't live in they you know um they literally lived in one room at the back and their bedroom in the bathroom and they've got this fantastic basement kitchen that i was like um in heaven um she's got this massive kitchen and, and diner just for them she's got a proper dining room upstairs and uh you're getting your back door fixed it's a bit stiff okay okay love something wrong with the trucker's truck there you go i hope that's what it is anyway um anyway this kitchen and she had a room in downstairs this sort of storage room that the husband had got this storage room at the front which was like an indoor shed which was just a man cave and but she had this room about half the size of my lounge which isn't small and in it she had the chest freezer so I had to go in there to get the food out to prepare their food but she had all these shelves around it and it was full 
all the shelves were so full of sundae glasses, coffee cups, recipe books, serving dishes, corn on the cob bowls and forks, fondue sets, cake forks, trifle bowls, cake stands, all that you name it, you name it, still in their, or in their boxes, so they'd have been looked after and loved. She'd obviously been an Uber hostess in the time, so I spoke to her about it. And she'd suddenly had a stroke and had got to the stage where she, I mean, she had to use a stair lift to come up and down to go and make a drink when she could. But by the time I went there, she was living upstairs and I was doing all that for her. And with hindsight, she'd probably have loved to have given that away for peace of mind to know it wasn't wasting. Obviously, it wouldn't have been ethical for me to suggest that in that situation um, as a carer. But, you know, that's I've seen it happen where there's so much stuff, just so much stuff. And that's the relief, the back of the lorry, the back of the lorry. There's a problem with the lorry, but he's OK. Nobody worry. Um, so I've got a stash of cookbooks, but my daughter gave me a book um, that you write in. Uh, it's kind of like a recipe diary. Um, it's called Mum's Cookbook. So I've written in there all my favourite recipes and little anecdotes about how not to do it. And she'll she'll have that. But otherwise, my recipe books will probably go to the charity unless anybody wants them. So moving on before I get stuck in kitchens. I love kitchens. So ornaments, ornaments and vases, you hate them, somebody else will love them. And have you, have they always cherished them? I've got some vases that are my nan's. Um, they're not the greatest, but I love them and it's the memory attached to them. Give things away to people who want them and remember that if they say no, that's okay. That's fine. You've probably been given things over the years, presents that you you thought, mm, lovely. I know I'm not going to say what it is, but I was given something and I thought, yuck, uh, never going to use it. And it's been put away and I will find a place for it when the time comes. Um, yeah, we've all got these things. So give them away. <laughs> as long as you don't give them back to the person that gave it to you, that would be bad unless they want it back. Maybe they really liked it. There's a thought. Um, old duvet sets. How many old duvet sets does one person need? My airing cupboard is full. In fact, you can't get any and old towels. And the old towels I've kept just in case. Uh, it's a bit of a fight to get things in the airing cupboard. That's another place I really need to look at. Tablecloths, tea towels and napkins. Showing the absolute age here. about antimacassars and doilies? Who's got those? Who remembers what an antimacassar is? I only know because my nan had them on some of the chairs at her house. Yeah, they were, they're the things that go on the back of the chairs. Um, good morning, Cheryl. We're just talking about antimacassars. If you know what an antimacassar is, they were like sort of doilies that were on the back of the chairs. So when the guys had oil slick through their hair to hold it back, it didn't stain the fabric, apparently. Don't know if we still do that. So again, they could go to charities, shelters, refuges, animal homes, duvets, towels, animal homes and vets, um, especially this year where there's lots of, um, you know, people are struggling to get to make ends meet. Charities will probably really, be, animal charities, I mean, probably really benefit from, from duvets and blankets and things. So everything you keep just in case, keep a few and recycle. And it was interesting that Margarita raised a, a fascinating point in the book. And she's got this theory that um, the Vikings knew about death cleaning because obviously they buried their people, <laughs> they buried their loved ones with all their prized goods. So that it was so they'd got everything for Valhalla or Asgard. Um, I mean, could you imagine if you were buried with all your prized goods today with all your, your Gucci handbags and your... Um, you know, uh, Louis Vuitton shoes and yeah, or your Reeboks and we need a considerably bigger grave. I mean, all right, we haven't got long boats to bury, but that would be massive, wouldn't it? Um, and it might also have been not to have those reminders of them. And I know, I mean, what is it? Aboriginal cultures, I think. Yes, it's Aboriginal cultures. When somebody dies, the older tradition was not to mention their name again, which, um, I think it was, let me get this right, I think it was so that it didn't rouse or trouble the spirit and they used to refer to it as, they wouldn't they never say death, they used to refer to it as a sorry business and that's a rather beautiful way but that's their belief, it might sound strange to the rest of us, yeah it was that they didn't disturb the resting spirit, I'm sure of it, anyway that's by the by. 
Okay, so we've, we're going all around the houses where we're going all around the world. That's lovely. Sweden to Australia. Um, where next? Books. Bought but never read. Who's guilty? And I know my friend Shirley, who's just joined, we were talking about hoarding the other day. How many books, Shirley? Was it 500? <laughs> There's so many books, so little time. So I've got books that I've bought, started. Very rarely do I get a book. I think, oh, I really can't. I can't do this. Uh, it's not for me. But if you don't want them or you've done with them, some people can read them again and again. You've all got your, your loved ones, your classic ones that you can do that with. If not, give them to charity or have a, when we can, have, have you know, family and friends over. So I'm getting rid of all of these. If you want any of them, take them. That might be an easier way of getting rid of things because people will think, oh, well, I'm doing her a favour rather than feel that they're taking stuff from you. Um, and if you've borrowed them, return them, whether that's libraries, um, because you can just shove them through the doors. <laughs> you can get away with not paying the fine. And um, in the book, Margarita talks about a... Um, in Stockholm, there's a, a book festival, a reading festival, a book day or something where there's swapping and people lay out books, um, tables of books and that. And, you know, that's amazing. I, I'd, I'd love that. We could start one here. But I guess another way of downsizing that is I don't know how people feel about um, Kindles and things. I don't have a Kindle. I don't have a Kindle at all. I prefer books. But that's one less way. And digital digitalizing things which I'll, I'll come to in a bit in a minute so you've got there's so many things she talks about old toys and kids stuff sheds and garages collections of things and that's a toughie like I said about the collection of dolls somebody will want them um but I mean you know collections of thimbles spoons I've seen collections of all sorts of things and you have to accept that somebody probably doesn't want them in your family. They might want one. My aunt had a collection of little brass ornaments and fridge magnets. And what we did is we all, after she died, we all took one. So I've got a little brass bell and a little cat fridge magnet and the rest got boxed up and sent to charity. So, you know, so if you've got a collection of things, be prepared to sell it or know that it will be sold if nobody else wants it. Um, secret stuff this was my favorite section so sort through um the things you don't want to hurt or embarrass your loved ones maybe burn them and if you can't face doing that which obviously you haven't got to burn everything put it in a box and on it put private burn when i've gone i mean whether people peek in it or not but at least they know that that's stuff that you don't want everybody to to be rummaging through maybe old diaries, gossip, something to do with debt, all the things that's not going to enrich anybody's life, those sort of things. And she also rather, she's a cheeky little what's name, she also mentioned sex toys in there about getting rid of them before somebody has to find them as well, which made me laugh. Photographs, leave these ones till last. You will disappear down memory lane, there's no doubt about it, but you don't have to throw them. If you're the last member or the oldest member of your family, write on the back who you are, who they are. Scan them into a computer. Um, I mean, it's lovely to have old photos. You could scan them into a computer and put them into a book. Or put more memory sticks and send them to family and friends as a present. Um, some will be of nothing much, just scenery that don't mean anything to you. Burn them if you don't want them. Or those that you want can go in your private box. Um, have a treasure box and keep them in there and you can go through things um, and look at them and again Margarita points out that if you're looking at something and you don't know what it is or you have no idea what the memory is it's no longer important to you you can either use it if you can remember to think about the good times or you realize that it's not important to you and bin it which I thought was a rather really good rather good thing so the top tips seem to be make it a way of life which makes sense because if you do it regularly, it'll stop it building up. Start before you think you need to. I think I need to start. Less mess, less stress, which is true. You won't lose things so easily then. Keep the things you love and not the things you don't. Be organised, a place for everything. Mark, are you watching? You need to keep a place for everything and get rid of the less personal first and then create a digital memory. 
So that's all of her advice. Um, and I think that that's, that really, that really resonates with me. And there's lots I can take forward there. And even just talking about it, even if it's all common sense, when you look at it like that, you've got a bit of a plan. I mean, again, I was talking to mum and dad found a box of photos in the bottom of his wardrobe. And said, oh, this is a picture of a wedding here. I don't know who it was. And it was a wedding that my uncle was best man at over 50 years ago. And mum obviously told uncle John, he said, God, I haven't thought about so and so for years. So she's going to send in the photos, but he hasn't thought about this person or, you know, uh, obviously we've got the turtles, the wonderful turtles that I talked about before, the taxidermy turtles. I don't know what to do with them. We're going to have to find a museum for them. Things like that, a specialist, you know, and, um, and then we've got some family Bibles, one from 1939 and one from around the turn of the century that's got my great great grandfather was in the Salvation Army and he used to preach sermons so it's got some of his notes in the side I mean how do you get rid of them I, I don't know I really don't know <laughs> but what I love about Swedish death clean is you can have a box of things that are important and keep them and it may be that we take photos of these things and give them give them on to people um, and I've got stuff the kids gave me I've got tickets and a program from a George Michael concert when I was 17. It's over 30 years ago. Two pieces of paper, two a ticket, a ticket, the letter that goes with it, because I went with um KM, Kent Messenger Online then, cards. So that's all the things to to be thinking about. Um and Digital passwords. Now I'm unsure about this, but she says about writing them down. Now I said to my son about doing this and he, he nearly had a kitten saying, you can't do that. You can't do that. But what I, I have got them written down to don't tell any burglars. Um, but obviously that's something that I'm going to look into more depth about how we can, our digital footprint and legacy once we're gone. And I've got a guest lined up to talk to us about that in more detail. So I'm skimming over that for now. But what I am going to do is I'm going to use this as an opportunity to go through my stuff, uh, marry up with what Kay was saying last week and, you know, find things and say, right, this is important. I want to keep this. I'm going to, to, to write down the story of this. And if it's small, I'll keep it and I'll keep it forever, you know, in my treasure box. I've got a treasure box that needs sorting out. But also, I think Natasha mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. Yes, yeah, she did about taking a photo of it so that you've got the photo of it. And if it's just a place, a thing, you know, my daughter, my daughter and my son will be able to look at it online at some point. And that's probably something that is going to come up and create in a digital memory, which is definitely something I'm interested in. And I'm researching how you can do that. So I should come back to you on that at some point. Um, and I know it's not the same as, as, as seeing the item, um, but if you've got photographs of it, at least you can see what it was. I mean, I've got crystals and ornaments and all sorts of things that nobody else is going to want. But the picture of it will be, oh, yeah, I got mum that or I got nanny that. My mum's got two little bunnies like this. And I was on, a, I think I was on a, I won them somewhere. And it says, I love you on it. And I gave it to my nan and she's still got that. And my, this is my other nan. And she's been, she's been dead for 26 years, bless her. But mum's still got them. And nanny had kept it in her drawer. <laughs> These two little silly bunnies. One's pink and one's white and they're cuddling each other. Um, it's just the value you attach to it, isn't it? And they were like a fairground prize. Absolutely worthless, but invaluable to us lot. So, um, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, I'll leave that with you uh next week i'm away so there'll be no time to talk next week but the following week we are going to be having um a talk with a guest so you won't just get me gabbling away at you we've got lovely jean who popped in earlier on and she's a soul midwife so she's going to be joining us then she, i think she's coming on the on the monday night because she can't do the tuesday so it'll be live on the monday night um, but it'll be I'll put it on as a replay on the Tuesday but you'll be able to I'll put the, the posts up for them and then I'm hoping to have the lady about the digital legacy and making your final plans the week after and then coming up we've also got a funeral director and somebody else talking about burials 
So until then, I've got a little quote from the lovely Margarita. Where are you, Margarita? Um, there we are. Let me just check I've got the right thing. Yes, I have. Right. Death cleaning is also something you can do for yourself and for your own satisfaction. And if you start early, let's say 65, it won't seem like such a huge task when, like me, you are somewhere between 80 and 100. One's own pleasure and the chance to find meaning and memory is the most important thing. It's a delight to go through things and remember their worth. And if you don't remember why a thing has meaning or why you kept it, it has no worth and it will be easier for you to part with. And I think that's lovely. So that's the book again. Uh, I'm not on commission for selling the book at all. I just think it's a wonderful little book and it really doesn't take too long to read. It's either down as der Stadning or it's the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning. So I shall leave you with that. Thank you for joining me and for your comments. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.